Dr. J, so we're going to go over Ancestry, Self Decode, and 23andMe and just see which mm -hmm. one is the best. I've tallied up all yeah. the points and we'll have a look at that when we get mm -hmm. to the end of this little podcast here. But it's, it's quite fascinating to see the differences between all these different providers, wouldn't you say? Well, yeah, especially because, you know, 23andMe has 650,000 SNPs, which is a lot of data, but Ancestry and Self Decode have over 900,000. So it seems like those would be better, right? It's like, well, 900,000 is better than 650,000. Yeah. So the assumption would be, well, and a lot of these companies, Ancestry and My Heritage, and there's a bunch of other companies that, that do these DNA uh, sequencing. Yep. But they all use the same third party company. It's called Illumina. Right. So it's not, it's not like they all have their really different changes. It's pretty similar. And that's what you see between self decode and ancestry. It's very similar. Yeah. But 23andMe, they have their own platform. Right. And I like 23andMe because they, they look more at health markers for the most part, but there are some exceptions. Yeah, yeah. So we'll just uh, compare the brain optimized genes through your unique software here. So mm -hmm. uh, which exactly which so yeah. Yeah, so well, 23andMe is famous for including the APOE gene, which you don't have, so it doesn't come up on your reports, but that's a massive difference and a super important gene to look at. If people have Alzheimer's risk in their family, I tell them to use 23andMe because it's the best in the Alzheimer's section. And yeah. even it even shows up in your section, right? They picked up an extra gene on your report yeah. in the 23andMe test compared to the other two. Correct. I did Ancestry probably four years ago. Then mm -hmm. I did Self Decode two and a half years ago. And I've only just done 23andMe recently. And I had no clue, but my brain does not handle mm -hmm. carbs well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yeah. And yeah. yeah, exactly. And you yeah. knew that from your experience, but you didn't see it on your DNA reports until we did the 23andMe. Yeah. A lot of brain fog, a lot of comprehension problems mm -hmm. I had, especially at mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And this is driving it for me. Yeah. <clears throat> well, in the seasonal effective too. I mean, I know now you get out in the sunshine a lot and yeah, you know, but probably it wouldn't have been as important if you only had done ancestry. So that's another advantage. Another yeah. win for 23 and me right on the yeah. first page of the DNA report. Exactly. Yeah. So they, the seasonal effective didn't show up anywhere until mm -hmm. this. Yeah. That's when I was a kid. I played golf, I was outside a lot, and that's what we did. Like, I'm 51, so we were outside, but that's, that's what we had to do. Makes yeah. a lot of sense like now, yeah. So mm -hmm. let's have a look at the next page here. So Yeah, so the caffeine stuff, you know, not that big of a deal, but it looks like self-decode is a little bit better. 23andMe is, there's a spectrum there, but. Yep, yep. Um, and then. And then over to Ancestry, Ancestry picks up a gene in the alcoholism section um, or alcohol damage. It causes more damage in that case. But again, yeah. nicotine, alcohol, caffeine, not that important to know those genes. You know, no. it's no. not like Alzheimer's or something that's super yeah. important yeah, yeah, <laughs> or yeah, disease, yeah. you know, which we're going to come up on. Yeah. So I watched the podcast with Hubert all about alcohol. Did you see that one? Mm. No. And I was having a couple of drinks you know, every other week. Mm -hmm. uh, and as soon as I listened to that podcast with Huben, I've gone mm -hmm. alcohol f free for over eight weeks now. Mm -hmm. I'm just not oh, yeah. worth it, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. So, yeah. But a um, little bit of difference there, not a lot, but uh, this one's pretty mm -hmm. interesting. Diet genes. Yeah, exactly. So 23andMe is the clear winner here um, yeah. on your report. They've picked up more <laughs> metabolism genes, you know, obesity genes yeah um intermittent fasting genes yeah a lot going on there those are important genes to know you know people people need to know how much they should whether they should intermittent fast whether they have obesity risk genes so they can do things to change that yeah in, yeah in specific ways you know yeah just talk us through the intermittent fasting and adiponectin what does that actually mm -hmm. mean well yeah so adiponectin is a fat burning hormone yep and those plus plus genes means you make less of that fat burning hormone. But the good news is if you skip breakfast, you make more. If you yeah. intermittent fast, you make more adiponectin. You make more fat burning hormone. So it's easy fix. 
Yeah. But if you don't think you have the genes like over on your ancestry report, yeah. Well, shoot, why bother intermittent fasting? Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> then, then we go down to the fat transfer <clears throat> obesity genes, and as you mm-hmm. said, the BBC did a one-hour documentary on it. Exactly. It was called "Why Are We Getting So Fat?" and they interviewed scientists and talked about how bad this gene is for obesity. Yeah. And again, intermittent fasting, it's a real high response gene to intermittent fasting. And yeah. they didn't talk about that in the movie or in the documentary. They should have because they didn't give any solutions. They just said, oh, it's a terrible gene. It causes a lot of obesity. And look at you. You've got a whole bunch of these and you're not obese. Well, that's me. <laughs> and I maintain that effortlessly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. you're not sentenced to be obese. That's, that's the mm-hmm. bottom line. And when we get to the end of this podcast, I'll actually show you a sample of what I ate in a day. So that'll be pretty interesting. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you intermittent fast. I mean, that's yeah. huge. Huge, yeah. <laughs> so now we go to the heart section. Yeah, yeah, heart disease. Um, pretty similar between all of them in my experience. I can see, yeah, you picked up one extra gene on the ancestry, which is nice. Um, yeah. And it's not a major gene in that category relating to flavonoids isn't super major. So it's not a big deal if you miss that gene, but it's, it's nice that ancestry picked it up, but not a huge difference. I think the the categories here are pretty similar between all the reports. Yeah. And the the interesting thing about testosterone is it lowers inflammation and that's what those flavonoids do too. So if you tease Mm. up, you you should be pretty good really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now we go into C-reactive protein and the, the start of the vitamin hormones and detox genes. Yeah, yeah. And the gut section, 23andMe has a slight advantage there also. Um, although interestingly, with some of my clients, sometimes their ancestry, when they send me both ancestry and 23andMe data, yep. I'll actually pick up more on the ancestry. So that one, it just depends on your specific genes, right. um, which company is going to be more thorough. Yeah, yeah. In your case, 23andMe wins. <laughs> 23andMe wins. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Again, once again. Yeah. Yeah, once again. Now we've got uh, into the vitamin D and, and the, the yeah. testosterone. Hormone. Testosterone, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Ancestry definitely is better here. If people are interested in their low testosterone genes, I do like Ancestry Yeah. compared to 23 And remember, for people watching or listening, you know, you're not seeing different genes. It's not like, oh, you've got a plus plus on ancestry and then a plus minus on 23 me. It's either yeah. they, they include the gene in their testing or they don't. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if both companies have it, you see the same result, but if, if one company doesn't have it, then you don't pick it up obviously because it's not there. Yeah. And what's also important to note is that even if you've got crappy testosterone genes, you can optimize mm. them. So Exactly. Exactly. And you've done that. And yeah. a lot of your people have done. Yeah, a lot of other clients actually have this gene. I'd probably, I don't know, 30, close to 40% have this gene. Mm-hmm. So you can optimize for it. You don't, you're not sentenced yeah, to low yep, testosterone. Yep. Exactly. Now, we move on to a few more of the hormones and thyroid here. Yeah, in the thyroid section, now I see the estrogen, it looks like self decode actually lends a little bit there. Um, yeah. And that one seems pretty comparable in my experience between the companies when I've done DNA reports, but the thyroid section, now yours came up exactly the same, but this one is a huge difference with ancestry versus 23 I mean, a lot of people. Yep. I th- ancestry is far better in the thyroid section for most people. So if you have a lot of risk of low thyroid or hypothyroid or problems with thyroid Hashimoto's in your family, I recommend yep. people do ancestry. Yep. Yep. Pick, it's probably- pick those genes up. It sounds like it's probably interesting and beneficial to do ancestry and also 23andMe. Yeah, and 23 yeah. That's what yeah. I've done. I've done that for all my kids, my wife, myself. Yeah. I've done them both because they don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to have gaps, you know. Yeah, and it's only an extra hundred bucks to get the other comparison, yeah. which is not a great deal. Yeah. Yeah, especially because sometimes they'll have like a sale, especially ancestry. Sometimes they'll do a half off sale and it'll yeah. be fifty bucks. And yeah. Yeah. Pick that up and and yeah, I run reports them. for free if people. If people send me both of them, I run the report for free for that extra company. So it's not like it's extra money on my end. No, it's just putting it through, you're pressing the button on your software that you've taken years and years to mm-hmm. put together. I exactly. can't imagine the research you've done. It would be just uh, so extensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the nightshades, Gene, too, would actually go back. I just noticed. Yeah. yeah. And that's actually super oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I meant to focus on that. Like I had no <clears throat> yeah. clue. And it makes a mm-hmm. lot of sense because if I do eat nightshades, I, I do notice that I'm not as sharp. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's a rare gene that. too. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you have picked that gene up because mm. it's a, it's a troublemaker. It's rare. It's interesting that ancestry doesn't have it. And I didn't know yeah. that that was the case, but um, yeah, that's, so that's a big one. That's going to cause a lot of anxiety and a lot of mm. you know fatigue, mm -hmm. isn't it? So that, Oh is yeah. Serotonin. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> I'll be able to, yeah, man. Uh, thank God I don't have plants to but I basically <laughs> eat carnivore anyway. So, yeah, exactly. Well, we have a client later tonight. We're going to talk about that has that gene, but, yeah. but yeah, the, the plant sterile suction, the carnivore genes and stuff where people need to eat a lot of meat. Um, mm. they're the same between the companies when people have them, I've had people that have those genes and, and they're always on both ancestry and 23 me. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And the, the folate and stuff is good between Ancestry 23 me and of course self decode loses one there. So yeah, loses you know. one, yeah, yeah. Now what are we on to the, the B vitamin status? Heavy yep. metals. That pretty similar God, here. Yeah. I don't have a heavy metal status. That's a pretty pretty rough one to yeah. be dealt. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And some people do. And I think that one I can't remember which company is better. I think Ancestry is actually a little bit better on the heavy metal testing. Right. Yeah. Uh, from my experience with other people, but I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, there's a couple of clients in Australia that went through ancestry and it picked up mm -hmm. a lot of genes. I think six genes in that section. Yeah. Mm. Pretty yeah, rough. Exactly. Pretty rough going. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Gym genes. Wow. Yeah. The muscle fibers and stuff. So it looks like basically the same except self decodes missing the, the strength gene. Um, yeah. So not a huge, not a huge difference. Not a, not a lot of difference there. Pretty comparable <clears throat> there. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah, oh, man, one. man, self self decode really takes a hit here. Huh? It, it takes um, a big one. Yeah, it all the advertising, all the marketing that they do, talking mm -hmm. about how how much more genes they have. Again, it's not necessarily about how many genes you test. It's about which ones do you test, the yeah. ones that matter, or just ones that are related to ancestry or something. Which one you're putting in? Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now the the blood flow, the blood. I mean, the blood pressure is important. A lot of people, you know, but the but the big one here because most people don't do self decode, they do ancestry or 23 me. And I do notice the pain sensitivity section is a lot better on the ancestry than 23 me. And sure enough, that's what you found too. Yeah. And that's an important, that's an important knowledge. You want to know your pain sensitivity it's because a, some people, some people get injured because they don't feel pain. They just keep jogging and their knee hurts a little, but they just keep going and then they blow their knee out. My experience of that is I was doing heavy squats and I felt my doctor, mm -hmm. oh, that's weird. And I kept squatting, went through it, and about two hours later, it started. You could see the blood starting to come out where it tore. <laughs> so yeah, you know, I yeah. didn't even feel. I just kept Thanks. pushing, pushing through the pain. If you know what I mean. Yep. Like, yeah, and some people need to do that because they have a, a high sensitivity to pain. They feel more pain than you're the yeah. opposite. So it's an important yeah. gene. Yeah. Yeah, definitely to understand what it's <clears throat> what it does. And sleep genes. So ancestry. Yeah, sleep twenty three. Me. Yeah. Going to win that one. Going to win that mm -hmm. one. So the whole tally that I've put together, there yep. it is. Yeah. So yeah. Ancestry is a clear winner. The clear, clear winner. Clear winner. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So basically the ancestry in 23 and me, if you're really serious, that's what you'd want to do. Put those mm -hmm. two together. So that's what I eat in a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it's good. Yeah. I like it. There's, there's quite a lot of calories there, but uh, you know, the plants, not the plant sterols, but the nightshades and everything else. I'm not supposed to eat a lot of vegetables. Mm -hmm. So am I? So that's kind of why I thrive on what I'm eating there. My blood work, which yep. is important, is good. I've got great metabolic health, homocysteine, C reactive mm -hmm. protein, liver function, kidney function, but no yep. one should try that. They shouldn't just go at that, should they, Dr. J? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you've got to really know your metabolic health before you can even consider putting something like this together. Yep. Yeah, and everybody's a little bit different too, obviously. And you know, yeah. I mean, the nightshades are a great example. You know, most yeah. people can have those nightshades, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, Not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, love, exactly. I love them too. I love them. Yeah, but uh, yeah. they don't. They don't love me. So. Mm hmm. All right, Doctor J. Well, thanks, Mark. Yeah. yeah, appreciate you putting that together. Yeah, no, it's interesting, isn't it? And it, it mm -hmm. really compares apples to, to apples, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah.